Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our beautiful planet Earth and its amazing atmosphere. But this topic is actually about something we don't really understand very well just yet. We're going to be talking about the level of atmosphere known as Geo Corona, which actually still kind of qualifies as atmosphere, but for all intents and purposes, we normally actually refer to it as vacuum. And that's because it actually extends very, very far away from Earth. As a matter of fact, the very recent paper on this particular topic was actually able to show us that Earth's atmosphere or its Geo Corona extends way past the moon and actually tickles the moon in a sense. It basically touches the moon and covers it with Earth's atmosphere. Now, this by itself might actually come as a surprise to you, but we've known that Earth's atmosphere affects moon's surface for a very long time. We've actually discovered molecules from Earth's atmosphere in moon's rocks for um, as long as the Apollo missions were bringing them back to Earth. And a lot of the time it was actually oxygen, but in this particular case it's actually also hydrogen. So, first of all, what are we talking about? So, what is this geo-corona thing? Well, first of all, I guess it has one of the shortest entries in Wikipedia. Three lines. That's really as much as we know about it. But at the same time, we actually have a really good picture from the Apollo 16 mission back in 1972 that actually kind of helps you visualize it. It's right here. It's this unusual glow that you see around our planet. And this is not some kind of a effect of a camera. It's literally hydrogen interacting with the solar radiation. And so we actually knew about this, but we just didn't realize how far away it extends. And it turns out as of February 2019, specifically from this paper right here, um, it actually extends to a distance of 620,000 kilometers. That's almost the double distance of Earth to our beautiful moon that's right here. So that's really, really far away. And that's basically the double the distance. So it's around up to here. And that's usually on the darker side. On the brighter side, it actually creates this unusual effect um, of high density because of the solar radiation. That looks something like this. So the solar radiation is coming from this direction. This is the major instrument that we use to detect all of this. And right here you can see uh, the Geo Corona extends much farther away from the sun than near the sun. And so what's really interesting here is that the entire orbit of the moon is covered in Earth's Geo Corona. In other words, the moon is from every direction bombarded by these tiny particles of hydrogen that escape our atmosphere. And that's what we think is happening here. We believe that Geo Corona is made up of hydrogen molecules that are still kind of gravitationally bound to our planet, but because they're so light, they're not really um, on the surface. They're not in the atmosphere. They escape into the upper atmosphere and they form this somewhat loose Geo Corona. That's our best explanation right now. We don't really have a better one. Now, we think that maybe just maybe it's not constant. It actually changes a lot. It disappears with time. Um, and we think that it actually does depend on the amount of water on the surface. So for the most part, it's probably a good indicator if a planet, specifically here we're talking about exoplanets, has liquid water on the surface. In other words, liquid water leads to large geo corona, which can then be detected by telescopes like, for example, the upcoming James Webb telescope, which may indicate to us that that exoplanet we're looking at might actually have water there. In other words, this is some good news for us, even though we know so little about this particular phenomenon. At the same time, one of the reasons we believe this is correlated with water is because there's basically none of this around Mars, and there's very, very little of this around Venus. And um, it seems that these particular geo corona, or I guess in some sense, hydrogen corona, um, actually correlate with some kind of a hydrogen producer, and the biggest hydrogen producer on our planet is, of course, H2O, water because it has two H's in there. But anyway, I think once we understand this phenomenon better, we'll be able to explain it a little bit better. But for now, that's our assumption. That's how little we know about this thing. We do know that it's very important though. And I think it's also important to understand how we were able to discover all of this. It's actually thanks to the device that's been orbiting very close to our planet in the so-called Lagrange point, specifically this one right here called L1, for the past few decades, actually since 1995. 
And this famous device is called Soho. Uh, I'm going to explain to you in a few seconds. But first, let me quickly explain to you what you're looking at if you haven't seen my Lagrange point uh, video. Uh, there are several points in the orbit of Earth where you can place a stable device or stable anything and it will stay in that orbit um, for as long as Earth and the Sun are not disturbed gravitationally. In other words, I could place a satellite right here in L4 and it will stay there. Uh, and This is uh, based on a mathematical concept that was discovered by a French uh, mathematician a long time ago and it's actually named after him. But L1 point is great for us if we want to study the sun, but if we also want to once in a while study Earth, because it's literally right here, you can place a device uh, in between Earth and the sun. It's The distance here is about 1.5 million kilometers, or about five times as much as the distance to the moon. And um, at this point, you can actually study both the sun and the Earth. And this right here, SOHO, is doing just that. So once in a while, it actually looks at Earth, but for the most part, it studies the sun and its activity, and some of the best pictures of the sun came directly from this mission, known as SOHO. And some of the coolest pictures that you've probably seen of the sun, or some of the activity from the sun, is usually from the Solar Heliospheric Observatory project. You can actually discover more about SOHO mission and the device itself by using NASA's eyes, their free application that they made for the public years ago, uh, but what's important to understand about this particular observation platform is that it really helped us understand everything about the sun that you see in a distance right there, but also about Earth's atmosphere for the past few decades. It's actually provided us a lot of really, really good data about stuff that uh, we just didn't really understand very well. So because of the distance from Earth, because it's actually kind of far away from Earth, Earth is right there, about one and a half million kilometers away from us. Um, it's able to actually see stuff that other telescopes can't because they're just too close. Like, for example, you can see there's quite a lot of different observational uh, devices and telescopes orbiting around the planet, but only one of them, specifically SOHO right there, that is really, really good at seeing Earth from this specific angle. Uh, the device that they use to actually detect all of this is called SWAN, and I don't really know exactly where it's located, but it's somewhere in there. There's a there's about 12 different devices here, and SWAN stands for uh, Solar Wind and Anisotropies. And um, what this refers to is basically um, various effects of the solar wind on the nearby atmosphere. And so the way that they actually saw the uh, effects of hydrogen on the moon and effects of hydrogen around the Earth itself is through detecting um, actual ultraviolet light refractions that were caused by all of this hydrogen around our planet. In other words, when the scientists using SOHO were looking at Earth, they realized that there was a lot of unusual refraction and unusual effects uh, coming off from as far away as about 600,000 kilometers, um, and all of it was caused by hydrogen. And this actually does create a bit of a problem because if you're using a telescope that uses UV light uh, to see things from Earth, you're going to have a lot of problems seeing things because this hydrogen is going to um, refract things and it's going to make things much more difficult to see. Which actually suggests that future telescopes using UV light need to be placed much farther away than 630,000 kilometers in order for us to be able to detect things from far away and not have any disturbance from this dual corona. So it actually kind of prevents us from seeing UV light very well, especially from really far away objects because the refraction is going to be quite significant. On the other hand, all of this hydrogen probably does something to our moon as well, especially if this was happening for like billions of years, but we're not really sure what just yet. We know that the hydrogen is not gonna stay on the moon for a long time, but it might actually cause some kind of a chemical reaction. All in all though, I think this research is pretty fascinating, but unfortunately it's still brand new and we don't really know much about it. And you can actually read more about it in the paper I posted in the description below. On that note, well, once we discover more about this Geo Corona stuff, I'm definitely going to come back and talk about it. But unfortunately for now, all we have is this beautiful picture from the Apollo 16 mission and our realization of how interesting, unusual and not well understood the atmosphere of our own planet is, not to mention other planets. We still don't really know much about Earth. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to watch something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.